Welcome to Modus Cafe. Join us for fun, lighthearted, and educational conversations around training, athletic longevity, and the human side of climbing. With your hosts, Mercedes Pollmeyer and Katya Dev. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Modus Cafe. Today, I'm here. I'm in Salt Lake City. Mercedes, where are you at? Uh, currently, I am still in Southern California, trying to get as much sun as I can before heading back up to the Pacific Northwest. Okay, well, you soak up that sun before the <laughs> snowstorm comes in. We just talked about the snowstorm. But what we wanted to talk about today is actually strength training, which is a really wonderful topic. I just started another training cycle myself. I got back to the gym yesterday, actually deadlifting for the first time in a very long time. And that felt really, really good. And so today we want to talk about why we should strength train and why we should lift. I don't like to use the word should, but let's say mm -hmm. why you might want to consider strength training, because we're not here to tell you what to do, but we both really love it. And Mercedes has a lot of really great insight to share um, about why it's really useful to do pretty much at any age. Yeah, any age and I strength training isn't just for athletes. You know, I think that may, maybe a lot of people believe that lifting and lifting heavy is something that only athletes should do, but um, you know, I think if if let's say you're listening to this podcast and you're not really into climbing like you don't do it on a regular basis, um and really maybe you climb as the form of fitness, I would say, even if you did that, or maybe you ran a couple of times a week that actually adding strength training is going to be beneficial for so many reasons. We are going to go into all of the different reasons, but I guess like the, really the goal is to understand that strength training isn't just for athletes and we can benefit so much from, uh, from lifting heavy and we'll define what heavy is. Um, but I really enjoy strength training because it crosses so many different, um, I guess, lines of movement. Like if you're, if you just want to feel better, generally strength training is going to help you. If you want to feel better as a runner, strength training is going to help you. Um, and, and really that's what strength training is. It's kind of the base that we can work on so that our movement patterns are better in life. And of course, as climbers, that's what, why we're going to be strength training is so that our climbing is better. Um, yeah. So should we start with what is strength training, like kind of defining some of that? Yeah, let's, let's go into that. I just want to say this one thing. I've never met anybody who started strength training, who then told me, that sucked or that is not good. In fact, everybody mm -hmm. I know who started strength training has always said that they feel better in their body. Yeah. And I just wanted to sort of say that I love what you said, how it's not just for athletes. It's really just for everybody to have a healthy body. Yeah. And, and I understand. So yeah. Like some people might not want to strength train because I, I can see uh, that it can be maybe boring for some, or uh, maybe it has certain uh, misconceptions. And we will also talk about some of those misconceptions. But, um, you know, in the end, you know, there's different ways to strength train. We're going to talk about maybe one or two ways of strength training. But really, the goal is to just make your body stronger so that you can do all of these things or the things that you want to do for as long as possible. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I cut, I cut you off, Katya. What were you going to say? I said all the things I wanted to Great. say. <laughs> Thank <laughs> <Okay>. you. <laughs> I think you should, um, yeah, get us started and maybe just define or explain what we mean when we say strength training. Yeah. I think I want to start like really simply and just saying that strength training is these basic movement patterns that are done at an intensity at a, at a, like a moderate to high intensity. Um, so let's say if you, if you know what a squat is, you can, if you can squat your body weight with no problem and it doesn't feel very challenging, then that, 
uh, that body weight squat, that intensity might not be enough to get you stronger. You can use that body weight squat and a lot of repetitions, maybe to increase capacity, but we're going to use the squat to get stronger. So if that squat is not difficult enough, what you're going to have to do is add weight to it. Um, I'm a big proponent of body weight training. I think you can get so much out of it. And let's say, uh, if, if you do want to just use your body weight, really, you have to scale that squat now to a single leg squat. There are a lot of really great reasons to do single leg work and to work on pistol squats. Um, but now we're starting to get a little bit more specialized and it kind of like pulls away from the, the idea that we want to just generally get stronger. And what's the easiest way to do that? The easiest would be hold extra weight and just stick with the squat. Okay. So that I hope that makes sense that really what we're going to be talking about more is using these fundamental patterns and adding more intensity to these patterns. Uh, so that's easier for someone to get stronger. When you start to make those patterns more complex, like a single leg squat, you will get stronger, but there's an element of learning the pattern. Um, and there is an argument of uh, when you take one limb away, um, now it becomes a balance exercise and now you won't be able to lift as heavy. Um, so we could talk about the benefits of body weight strength training, um, but I think if you're someone who needs to just get stronger, add some muscle mass, this other way of just adding more weight to these movement patterns is going to be a better way. And that's what we're going to talk about. Um, and so in, in most of the research, uh, we know that when athletes, but, you know, a lot of research is conducted on college athletes, especially like male college athletes, uh, we know that strength training is going to improve their performance in whatever sport that they're doing. Uh, more and more research is coming out um, that done on females and not at the collegiate level, uh, maybe more of it, the, the semi-pro level or even amateur level, um, and that they're uh, performance also improves. And most of the time they're looking at an intensity that's around 85%. You can develop strength below that um, percentage and you can develop uh, strength, you know, obviously above 85%. Really, we're looking at 85% or more um, for your intensity. Um, Mercedes? Yeah. One second. What do you mean when you say 85%, 85% of what? Yes. Thank you. 85% yeah. of your one rep max. And the way that you would scientifically evaluate what your one rep max is, is to actually just go and lift your one rep max. There's a lot of problems with this though. Uh, if you're very new to lifting, let's say you've only squat, maybe you've only done a body weight squat and adding weight is now this new thing that you've experienced. And, uh, it could actually be dangerous to find your one rep max. Um, so for a lot of new people coming into strength training, this 85% won't matter so much, but we'll, we'll teach you what rate of perceived exertion is RPE. Uh, you can use this scale from one to 10 to decide, okay, is this challenging enough for me or not? Um, and honestly, like that takes, that also is a skill is learning what intensity feels like in your body. And that's going to be different for everyone. Um, as you get better at lifting, you could then experiment with one rep maxes, but really only get, only do that if you feel really comfortable with the lift that you're doing. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel about doing a whole extra episode on how to strength train and how to find the right intensity and how to find the right weights oh, and how yeah. to make adjustments? We should totally do that. Maybe we can make a follow-up one Yeah, to this Let's one because today what we wanted to just really talk about today is really what are the benefits of strength training? And yeah. I have another question for you, Mercedes, um, which is you gave the squat as an example. And I think people work really well with examples. They can really, you know, 
envision what we're talking about when we say strength training because it is kind of a very it's a buzzword that everybody talks about but i want to make this very sort of tangible for people so let's give a few examples of um exercises just examples of what we're talking about when we talk about strength training so you talked about the squat and specifically you know squatting with both legs and using as heavy of a weight as you can and that i'm assuming that means if you can use the bar which is 45 pounds or 35 depending on the gym you that's probably what you mean and then you can progress from there yeah heavy weights I yeah what a really are... good a good starting point for that would be the goblet squat where you hold the weight out in front of you before you start to add the weight on your back because even just like having weight on your spine is something mm. you have to get used to and it can be like kind of weird on your neck um so yeah if you're going to add weight either hold weight by your sides or hold the weight up by your shoulders or do a goblet squat with a kettlebell uh mm -hmm. like basically the weight under your chin so a two-legged squad with pretty much weight that challenges you. Let's yeah. talk about the intensity and the RPE maybe in the follow-up episode. I think that could be a really nice episode to talk about exactly how to do it and how to go about it. Yeah, that sounds so good. The two-legged squad would be one example, and you yeah. explained really well for why we want to use two legs versus one. Um, do you have any other examples of what could be some go-to exercises that we talk about for general strength training? Yeah, so we we are looking for general patterns uh, in movement, and so a squat is one movement, a hinge is another movement. So that would be hinging at your hip. Uh, so movements that you might have seen before are deadlifts, um, Romanian deadlifts. The those would be the top two for hey, hinging patterns. Yeah. What about a um, bridge, or what about a you know, what is it? Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. You, a hip there's thrust. Some yeah. Hip yes. thrust. Exactly. A hip thrust could be considered a hinge. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, that would be a little bit more specific to, um, certain body parts or muscle groups. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we are strength training and we're talking about these bigger patterns, we're using as much muscle in the body as possible mm -hmm. so that's why a squat is so good for like a goblet squat would be excellent as a as a squatting pattern because it uses the most muscle possible a deadlift or a romanian uh deadlift are great because they're using the most muscle possible in a hinge pattern and if if you have problems with hinging then you could do a hip thrust exercise which is a smaller pattern and it does get like the glutes and some of the hamstrings for sure um, so in, in a smaller way, it is categorized as a hinge pattern. Okay. That was awesome. Yeah. And are there any other exercises that come to your mind that you want to share? Uh, for hinging, not really. Like, again, we're trying to stick with the two leg version. When you, once you move to one leg, now you, you won't be able to lift as heavy and you have this mm -hmm. balance component. Mm -hmm. So we, we talked about the push. We've got a hinge pattern. Then we got a pushing pattern. So that, Excuse me, Mercedes, one second. Yeah. You talked about the squat. You said yes. push. Just want to clarify. So yeah. we got the squat. Squat, the hinge. Yeah. And then now we've got the pushing pattern. Mm -hmm. So a push would be anything like an upper body push, uh, using as much muscle as or uh, as much body as possible. And the easiest one is a push-up. So being able to do push-ups for some people that's really really challenging and so just working on the push-up is awesome another great one is a chest press or a bench press mm -hmm. and those are easily scalable um so we've got so we got three patterns we got the fourth one is a pull movement and as climbers we do this a lot so like pull-ups but don't forget that we also pull in a um, horizontal way as well so climbers should actually work on horizontal pulling patterns which is like rows um because it's going to get uh more of our mid back and be really great for our posture as well and then the last one which isn't really a movement pattern but it's a focus and i really like just focusing on the core and like spine work um so anything that creates a lot of tension in the body so like planks 
And then the opposite of a plank to work the spine would be a J curl. Um, so something like that, that really works on tension and then the opposite of tension, which is relaxation and movement. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are kind of the big, the five big categories that we want to work on if we're thinking about strength training and introducing strength into our routine. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that, Mercedes. And should we dive into why we should be, oh, I don't like to use the word should, why someone might consider doing strength training and really the benefits of it. Maybe we can talk about the benefits both for general health, because we talk a lot about general health. When we work with our athletes, we are, you know, we think about humans first and then climbers second and maybe general health. And then maybe we can also talk about how that then translates into climbing kind of mm -hmm. almost as a secondary benefit. Yeah. So uh, when you strength train at uh, like general benefits that come from that are obviously you're going to get stronger. So, you know, you feel more balanced when you're moving. So if you have some sort of weird accident or something like that, you're able to rebalance and get out of that situation. Um, you also just feel more capable in your movement when you're stronger. When you're stronger, you're also, your joints are, uh, there's more integrity in the joints. So the, the, the tissue was just built up more to be able to sustain any kind of load that happens in daily movement like carrying your groceries, moving laundry bags, helping your friends move house and you're like moving furniture, all of these things. Uh, I guess the the strength strength training is like an insurance policy for those, those one-off days that you have to do some weird movements and you have to lift heavy loads. Um, another benefit is actually increasing muscle mass. And now we're, we're not talking about bulking up um, uh, we're talking about just, you know, increasing some muscle mass. And I think most of us would benefit a lot from having muscle mass on our body, especially female athletes, um, you know, as, especially as we age, but we can talk about that in our longevity podcast at some point. Um, but when you have more muscle mass, you're going to improve your body's metabolism. And for just general health, having a really strong metabolism is going to be great for us. You know, we feel better. We feel more energy through the day. We use our food more appropriately, you know, um, especially if you're maybe fueling around your workouts, that's a great way to um, use that energy that you're, that you're eating, it's going to go straight into building muscle in your body. Um, you know, so it, it does improve metabolism it, it can improve how many calories you expend in the day as well, which is great. Um, it improves your power. So, you know, if for some reason you need to jump over things, uh, for climbers, you know, we'll talk a little bit more specifically about what climbers will see, um, as benefits, but, you know, like you may be able to push something a little, like if you have to push a car, you know, when your car breaks down, that is like a power move. You're going to have to move quickly. Um, so those are some like daily things that, that I think, uh, help us with, um, you know, just being, feeling stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know we're actually going to do a whole podcast episode about longevity, but I just want to hone on, on in on this point of how the how muscle mass really helps us age gracefully and healthily because i actually used to work as an emt so i used to be in the medical field and actually this is really far down the road but as as soon as people stop being able to be self-sufficient and this might sound crazy but as soon as people stop being able to buy their own groceries you know and even just use the bathroom on their own and these are really simple, you know, things in life that we need to do. But the problem is as we age, we do lose muscle mass and, you know, then we're more prone to injury. And as soon as we lose our independence and that start, I mean, I don't have a specific study in mind, but general studies have shown then general health declines, you know, once you're like so dependent on other people and your mental health declines. So it's really 
thinking really long term too and the way I like to think about it is like a retirement plan most people think about retirement plans and most of us know that the earlier you pay into your retirement plan the more you're going to have in the end to live of um, at old age and I think building muscle is very similar the earlier mm-hmm. we can start building muscle the better the foundations for you know keeping that muscle mass as we age and having said that we'll also talk about this um of course you can start strength training at any age if you haven't done it um and you might already be 50 well the sooner you start the better in fact the older you are the more i would suggest thinking about it um starting sooner rather than later and if you're younger you know again the retirement benefits are going to be great the earlier you start um building those habits and building those muscles Mm-hmm. and the other thing I just wanted to add when you said it really you said something really nice about it makes people feel more capable and I think not just on the wall as climbers but even just like moving you know throughout our daily lives and that's like one of the things that I noticed the first first is actually not my climbing necessarily but just like how much stronger I felt um like in my everyday life I think it also gives people more confidence Mm-hmm. It just gives people more confidence um, in their daily lives and, of course, on the climbing wall as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I I do, you know, strength training is a skill. I know that we talked about in the beginning that, okay, if, if you go more toward like calisthenics, that's a skill. I mean, any kind of movement pattern is a skill. And so if you do start early and start now, and you continue to do it, you're just going to get better and better. And when you have those periods of falling off the wagon, or you don't have time for strength training, coming back to strength training is going to be so much easier when you've laid such a big foundation, uh, when you first started. And, you know, obviously the longer that you strength train, the easier it is to get back into it. The easier it is, is to build strength. And, uh, you don't have to lose strength as you age, uh, yes, there's going to be a point when you will not be able to increase strength anymore, but you might be surprised how long you can continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger, um, especially as a climber. Um, so the earlier you start investing in that, the higher that peak is going to be able to go. Um, so yeah, I think that that's a really good message as to like, if you're not strength training now and you're interested in it, start, start now and, and try it. Yeah. Okay, let's cover some specific um, benefits for climbers too, for strength yeah. training. Yes. Um, do you want to go first? Yeah. Uh, I'm just looking at my notes. <laughs> yeah, you can. I can actually start with one right away. I think sure. one of yeah, the most underrated it. ones is even just being strong off the wall. You know, like we always think about climbing, we always think about being strong on the wall, but even just being strong off the wall, that means approaches, you know, having strong legs for long approaches if you're a track climber or you have to, you know, carry heavy pads. You know, I just talked to one of my athletes, she's in Joshua Tree right now. She has to carry three pads for a whole mile just to get to her boulder. And that's a lot. Those pads are really, really heavy. So that can just help so much carrying around all of your gear um, for longer approaches and also falling good falling or sufficient falling you we want to catch a lot of that impact with our legs and the stronger our legs are the better we can fall and kind of catch that impact so mm-hmm. those are the two things that come to my mind when i think about just you know strength training for climbers that is beneficial for even just off the wall yeah and actually uh this isn't part of my notes but it, it does remind me that when you strength train your endurance actually goes up uh, because you're more efficient now in how you're you're moving. Um, and, you know, for climbers, that's also like a benefit, like the stronger you are and you're climbing, you're actually going to be able to climb longer on the wall. So, you know, uh, compared, I would say maybe people who um, don't strength train, maybe they just don't have the same capacity. And that's that's strength training really does build capacity for movement. Um, and as climbers, that's what we want. Um, so some like very specific things that climbers will notice when you strength train is the ability to hold tension or understanding tension in the body. So if you're lifting heavy and you understand how to deadlift, you understand how to, uh, do a good squat and now it's, it's heavy 
you are training the body to be able to handle these very heavy loads and your body naturally increases tension to be able to hold that load. And so you can use that same feeling of tension in the body when there's hard movements on the wall. You understand like, oh yeah, this is the kind of tension I need to bring in order to hold a barn door. Or if you're doing a really hard dead point, you can hold that tension. Um, so, you know, you can learn so much from lifting heavy and pull it onto the climbing wall. Um, some other things, I mean, like, like the hinge, for example, um, that like working a hinging pattern, when you, when you look at the movement, when your hips are going back and you're leaning forward and then you stand up quickly, that is a pattern that you see all the time when we're doing dynamic moves. So when you're doing a dynamic move from on the wall, you're, you're bending at the hip and then extending. And so that's going, when, when you're lifting heavy in a deadlift, you're going to see your power improve because you can make better dynamic moves, maybe further dynamic moves, and you just feel stronger uh, in that movement. Um, pressing. This one is a little harder to see on the wall, but when you're developing a really good pushing movement, you're actually using um, those muscles when you're on overhangs and when you're doing compression, so arrets. Uh, so when you're pressing, you're using your pecs. When you're on overhangs, you're actually also compressing. You're pulling handholds toward each other, and that's the same for any other compression movement. Uh, so when you're bench pressing, you're going to see these benefits when you're on overhanging climbing or on compression moves. Um, and that the same goes for um, like heavy rows. So any kind of rowing motion, uh, pulling motion, that's you'll see the greatest benefit there. That's a no brainer, I think, for a mm -hmm. lot of people. But but the overhanging component. Uh, I think is really, really important. If you can't really climb on overhangs and you feel that your shoulders are coming away from you, like your your spine is kind of rounding down toward the ground, you don't have enough strength to um, assist, like uh, handle your body weight uh, in that overhang position. So rows are going to help you so much uh, for overhanging terrain. Um yeah, I yeah. love that you actually really focus in on that because I think it was one of the one of a huge aha moment for me when I realized that doing pull ups is less specific to climbing than doing rows. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we pull horizontally too, but often we can use our feet better too if we're on horizontal terrain. And when we actually pull more is when we are in these overhanging terrains, and the pulling motion for climbing an overhanging terrain is a different type of pulling yeah. than um, doing pull ups. So. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. And sort of to finish up this episode, let's talk about some myths. Yes. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> want to share yeah. Let's yeah, talk about some one. myths and let's bust them. Yeah. We'll we'll talk about the biggest one for sure, which is that if you're lifting, that you're going to get bulky. Um, I think this is like, I think a lot of maybe females women feel that way yeah they're like really really afraid I used of that. to be so scared yeah 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 but I actually got leaner <laughs> 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 the opposite happened to me which is funny but I was so afraid of getting really bulky for a long time yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. you're not alone like I think guys also feel that way like they don't want to get heavy mm -hmm. um I think men uh you know, they have the ability to add weight a lot faster than women. Um, and like, I understand the sentiment for, okay, let's not get heavy legs, bigger legs, but, uh, okay. We'll talk about the genetics for a second. There is a genetic component to building muscle. Some people who have shorter legs or shorter limbs, uh, they're going to build muscle a lot easier than people who have longer limbs. Um, and then there's an even smaller percentages where uh, you don't, those people might not have to train very much and put on a lot of muscle. All right. That I think those, we don't see a lot of those people, but yes, they do exist. And 
uh, we can recognize that that is something that happens. But when you're strength training, you're not training in a way that is going to put muscle, so much muscle on your body, because one that takes a lot of effort, you would have to be in the gym and lifting at least five days a week and lifting in rep ranges that are going to specifically add muscle mass to your body. You can add muscle mass in any rep range, but generally rep ranges above eight repetitions and you're going to failure. That is going to put muscle mass on your body faster than rep ranges that what we're trying to go for, which is more like the three to five, six to eight rep range. So you have to train as a bodybuilder in order to really bulk up. And that's not what we're doing. And most people find that training to really hypertrophy. That kind of training is the people who do that, they're very dedicated and they're very passionate and it's really, really boring. So if you think that strength training is already pretty boring, bulking up is extremely boring for at least most of us, you know, uh, unless you're really a physique athlete and want to go for that. Uh, it's really difficult to stick to, um, to be able to build that kind of bulk that we have in our mind, that's going to happen to our body. Um, and you know, it kind of disqualifies the amount of effort that someone has to put in, in order to build that kind of mass muscle mass, you know, um, if you think that anyone can just build muscle mass because, oh, I'm going to like lift a weight once or twice a week. Uh, I think that just like devalues what, what these people actually do. Like, I think physique um, athletes, like that is their life. They're putting so much effort and so much dedication to build a body like that, that not anyone can do that. Um, so and, don't be afraid. Yeah. yeah. Don't be afraid to build muscle because it's actually really difficult to do. Yeah. And you have to be very intentional about it. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Thank you for that. It is very, very, very difficult. Yeah. And so yeah, one myth that I sort of alluded at earlier too, that I want to just like maybe wrap up with, unless you have anything else to share is that um, you are too old to strength train. Mm. You are never too old to start strength training because the benefits are huge. And I can, if anybody's interested, you know, message us, I can go and dig out these studies. I I have not looked at them in a while, but I believe there's a recent study that came out that even looked at people who started strength training in their 70s and still seeing benefits. Now, the strength training for people in their 70s looks different. They're not going to deadlift 300 pounds. But the idea with strength training is that you challenge your muscles. And so strength training at the age of 70 looks different than at the age of 60, than at the age of 50, than at the age of 40. But the earlier you can start, the better it is. Just imagine, you know, the earlier you start, you might be strong enough to still play tennis when you're 70 instead of doing physical therapy or, you know, pick up all is pick up, pick up all is really picking up now or anything else. Like the stronger and more capable your body is, the more you'll be able to enjoy life when you're older. Mm -hmm. So the benefits are not just, you know, now, but they're later. And certainly, you know, being older we're both getting older mercedes and i you know it doesn't mean you can't do it now one of the things that we do realize is that especially maybe for older people or people who've never done it that there's this um, there's this kind of preconception or this notion that you know no, only 20 year old you know guys that go to the gym you know strength train because they can lift so heavy like strength training can really be modified to your own body and mercedes and i are going to do an episode on this we're going to perhaps even next week, as soon as we can, we're going to cover in an episode, like how you can strength train to um, really meet your body where it's at. Because that's really what strength training is. You know, you don't have to be this person lifting 300 pounds or benching 200 pounds. You know, when I do bicep curls, I use 15 pounds, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but that is because it's challenging my muscles. And so we really strength train you know, where our body's at. I just started bench pressing again and I, I was just using the bar. I was just using the bar because the bar is heavy enough to challenge my body, but I know it's still going to be so good for me. So I recommend you consider strength training and then you tune in to one of our next episodes where we specifically talk about, you know, what exercises to choose that work for you, how to choose the right weight. We talk about intensity, 
um, and how to modify exercises mm -hmm. um, so they work for you. I do have, yeah, so we're definitely going to cover so much because this is such a big topic. And I did think about one other myth um, yeah. uh, that I've heard actually a lot of people say is that they're, they're, uh, they think they're going to get injured by lifting. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you don't, if you do it right, and you really have to screw it up pretty bad and to get injured. But if you stay within, like listen to your body and don't let ego drive you to lift a heavier weight than you're capable, you won't get injured. You know, that really that's where I see a lot of people go wrong is that they they have this image of maybe a 20 year old lifting 300 pounds and they think that's their starting point. And yes, that probably will lead to injury. You had just have to like start with uh like where you're at and we'll go a little deeper into that. But just know that you won't get injured strength training. Um in fact like strength training will has been shown to decrease risk of injury, especially if you're an athlete um and in just day-to-day -day life. Actually that's what I wanted to say too is that I think I know people are worried they might get injured but there might be, they might actually be more likely to get injured especially as they age if they don't strength train. You know I see lots of people who especially in Salt Lake City you know like to go ski and you know people get older but during the year they just sit on the couch or in front of their laptops and then they go ski and that is that can be so hard on their bodies and now you're adding load and you're adding intensity and you're adding movement to that you might be more likely to get injured going skiing heavy off the couch without having strength trained during the year and in fact if you do strength train and then you go skiing or climbing or you know especially if you're inconsistent with the hobbies that you'd love to do if you can just get some basic regular strength training in it's like flossing for your body you just keep your body healthy so then you can go ski when the season is here you can go and play tennis and all these things so that's right. Yeah, I guess we both love strength training too. And maybe that's another thing we can talk about is how to make it fun. I think a lot of people think it's boring, but the beauty about strength training is you don't have to do a lot either. Mm -hmm. Your sessions can be really short. You can do so much with just 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like you do not need to go and beat yourself up for two hours. Um, and even just once or twice, even just once a week, if you don't strength train at all, if you add one 30 minute session once a week, boom, you're mm -hmm. better off than not having done it. That's so right. We should ooh, talk about this for sure. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay. Wonderful. All right. I think that's it. You have to go. Great. I have to go. I gotta go. Yeah. Have some dinner. Okay. And wow, this is really fun. Yeah. Excited to talk a lot more about this topic. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Thanks everybody for listening. All right. Yes. And we'll talk to you soon. Catch you in the new one. All right. Bye. Bye.